Go gently on me. I think that's probably enough. All right, what happens when I bring the weights in? Ah! <laughs> that's going in the outtakes. <laughs> All right, well, okay, this time I won't say that's going in the outtakes. We'll just, I'll just run with it, okay. <laughs> Hang on, let me just get... Now, what's going to happen when I bring the weights towards my body? Oh, has anyone got any Stematil? Oh, yeah. All right, what's going on here? And when I put them back out again, it slowed, de slowed down. Did I put them back out again? Oh, no, but can you cut it? Will it fit together given that I've been moving around? All right, what do you think is going to happen when I bring these two weights close into my body? Once more. Okay, what's going on here? Now scientists have an expression, angular momentum. Now crudely speaking, angular momentum is the amount of spin in a body, the amount of rotation in a body. And the rule about angular momentum is that if there are no external forces acting against or in the direction of rotation, then the amount of angular momentum should, should be conserved, should remain constant. Now you saw with your own eyes that when I brought the weights in towards my body, my rate of rotation increased, and then when I uh, took them back out towards the outside, my rate of rotation decreased again. So how can I possibly convince you that the angular momentum stayed the same given that the, my, my angular speed, my angular velocity changed. Well, let's uh, think about what's happening to the weights. Okay, let's just for the moment ignore the rest of the system. These weights are quite heavy, so what they do is a pretty good uh, indicator of the way things are behaving. Now, for, let's treat these weights as though they're point masses. Okay, let's forget the fact that they're a funny little shape. Okay, we'll just treat them as though they're little, tiny little spheres. Now, the angular momentum of a point mass is the mass of the object multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the angular velocity. We usually use the symbol omega, okay? Angular velocity or angular speed is the amount of angle that it rotates through per second. All right, so we have mass times radius squared times angular velocity, m r squared omega. Now, when I'm out here, r is big. So m r squared omega. When I bring the weights in, now r squared has become much smaller, but m r squared omega has to stay the same. It's conserved because there are no outside forces causing me to rotate faster or slower. So, when r squared decreases, omega, the angular speed, has to increase to compensate for that change in radius in order to keep angular momentum constant. That's why my rate of angular, my, that's why my angular speed increases, so the rate of rotation increases. Now, I forgot what I was going to say next. What was I going to say next? Let me just quick uh, stop it for a sec. You don't need to record me uh, checking the internet. So there are lots of examples in nature of 
where the conservation of angular momentum explains the behaviour. For example, ice skaters, if they're spinning in a circle, they might want to spin very, very fast, so they will bring their arms and legs in, just like I did with the weights, and, and spin very, very quickly. Um, there are lots of examples in astronomy. For example, there are special kinds of stars called pulsars, and these are stars that, although they started out originally as, as normal looking stars, rotating at a sluggish kind of rate, similar to that of our own sun, as the stars die and they collapse and become very, very compressed, the radius decreases, so their the angular momentum increases dramatically, in some cases up to thousands of times a second. So uh, why don't we uh, get dizzy again, eh? Has anyone got any stematil? Oh, it's one more thing I forgot to mention. Now, I was talking about what happens to these weights when I was describing the conservation of angular momentum. Now, strictly speaking, if you really want to understand what was happening, you need to apply what I said to every single particle in my body. So really what you need to do is you need to add up the angular momenta of all of the particles in my body in order to get the right answer. But uh, we'll leave it at that. I'm still in. Start again. I'm still in. I'm still feeling nauseous from that spinning chair. <laughs>